To those of you who are here in church and to those of you watching online, good morning. As we begin Mass, ask ourselves, what insight will I receive from the Word of God at this Mass? What do I want to say to Jesus today as I walk forward to receive His precious body? And what do I want to say to Jesus after I receive his precious body? Jesus tells the people to do what the scribes and the Pharisees tell them, but to not follow their example. For they preach the word of God, but they do not follow it. We must live by the word of God, Jesus and give good example to our children and all, all who are around us. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without destruction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Peter, and the preacher is Father Francis. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We enter into our liturgy today asking forgiveness for our sins and for our Lord Jesus to strengthen us always to follow his will for our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. 
A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and of your blessing I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I therefore have made you contemptible and base before all the people, since you do not keep my ways but show partiality in your decisions. Have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. O oh Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things too sublime for me. In you, Lord. Nay, rather, I have stilled and quieted my soul like a wind child. Like a wind child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved, have you you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you, we proclaim to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we too give thanks to God unceasingly that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received not a human word but as it truly is, the Word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Or excuse me, Matthew. <laughs> Jesus spoke to the crowds and said to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor at synagogues, 
greetings in the marketplaces and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. This week I visited some of the grades at the school, the elementary school, and we did some prayers. We uh, prayed for the war going on in Israel and between Hamas and, uh, and Israelis, and we also uh, uh, prayed for uh, peace in the world. And I'd like to read to you one of these prayers, if you'd like to hear what the young people these are the seventh graders. This prayer goes, Help all those who are suffering in the war between Israel and Hamas. Help all who have been kidnapped, that leaders stop the war and get as much help as possible. May everyone stay safe during this tragic event. And then another one, one more. Welcome all families whose souls have passed away, that they may be in a better place. Please help all who suffer and help them have the basic necessities. Help all those in this tragic event. They wrote uh, prayers, each, uh, each student, and so I'm not going to read any more, but you get the idea of their, their concern for what's going on and their uh, thoughts at this time. So now I'd like to read to you a prayer for a priest, a prayer for priests. And this prayer sounds like this. Lord, fill with the gift of the Holy Spirit him whom you have designed or you have deigned to raise to the rank of priesthood, that he may be worthy to stand without reproach before your altar, to proclaim the gospel to your king, of your kingdom, to fulfill the ministry of your word of truth, to offer you spiritual gifts and sacrifices, to renew your people by the bath of rebirth so that he may go out to meet our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, your only Son, on the day of his second coming, and may receive from your vast goodness the recompense for a faithful administration of his order. Well, the readings today, you heard that they uh, center on a reprimand, a rebuke of bad priests. And uh, the first one from the Old Testament comes from a book called Malachi. Malachi is a word that means messenger, so it's not necessarily a proper name, at least according to Jewish tradition. Uh, they think that's probably the priest Ezra who wrote it, not uh, somebody named Malachi, because Malachi is merely a, 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 a description. And the book of Malachi is a long call to the, is the people of Israel to return to the Lord. The priest Ezra, he led the people in a re recommitment, a reconsecration to the law of the Lord. And so in this section of Malachi, he, it's in the beginning of the, of the book, and he says these harsh words to the priests. And now, O priest, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you and your blessing will be a curse. You have turned aside from the way and caused many to falter by your teaching. You have made void the covenant of Levi. I therefore 
have made you contemptible and base before all the people, since you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your decisions. These words are very harsh. And I have to say, if you're not a priest, you might listen to those prayers and say, Oh, yeah, God, just give it to them. <laughs> and uh, you may have a certain smugness sitting back there, um, sitting on our pews, listening to um, the, this rebuke of, of priests. And listen now to what Jesus says. It's also very harsh words. He says to the people, do and say, excuse me, do and observe All the things whatsoever the scribes and Pharisees tell you, but do not follow their example. They preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear. They lay them on people's struggle, on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to help them. All their works are performed to be seen, and they like places of honor at banquets, Greetings at marketplaces and titles of, of honor. So Jesus rebukes the priests. These are uh, not the Catholic priests yet, because, uh, but this is written by St. Matthew. And it is probably meant to be heard very carefully by those who have taken on the office of priest, which is very early in the church the priesthood of the, of the church was first for the um, bishops and then the priests and then for the deacons. And so the bishops who had the fullness of the sacrament of priesthood and then the priest who um, is uh, commissioned and ordained to the sacramental, uh, uh, sacramental uh, uh, service to the community and the deacons um, sharing in this uh, in the service of Christ in the, and, uh, and serving Christ, serving their people. So um, now for decades we've been listening to the reports of, on the media about bad priests. And the meme, the, you know, the image of a bad priest, a priest who is a hypocrite, um, and the evil behavior of bad priests. We have been hammered with this for a long time. And it's very, very public. And every time it hits, a, uh, hits the front pages or uh, the front sections of the, of the newspapers, it wounds us very, very deeply. But what is a good priest? What is a good priest? Well... We are. (laughs) Um, Let us look first at Christ, though. Look first at Christ. Christ who established his, he established his church on the faith and testimony of St. Peter and the apostles. The authority of Jesus to do this is before us on the cross on the cross, here is Jesus' authority as he surrenders himself to fulfill the Father's will, that he come and be the sacrifice acceptable to, for the forgiveness of sins, to forgive the sins of the world, of each person, of each one of us. The night before he died, he established the, the, the Holy Eucharist, and he Uh, spoke the words that the priest would speak uh, for Christ, the priest at that point that he uh, calls down the Holy Spirit, that he pronounces the words of Jesus over the bread and the wine, uh, allows for Jesus to act through him, through his ministry. And then look at the young men who are uh, preparing to become priests. Um, the last uh, couple of weeks, we've had the collection passed uh, to help in the formation of 
uh, our, uh, of our students preparing to be ordained priests, to preparing to be ministers of Christ to you in all of our parishes and in all of our uh, ministry. And um, what is it that those seminarians see? Well, all of us could, each one of us who are priests could probably tell you many uh, stories of, of what kind of a priest attracted us to follow Christ. To me, for me personally, it was something very simple. It was, but it hit me very personally. It was looking at the cross and being reminded, you know, he did this for you. What will you do for him? What will I do for you, Christ? For you have done so much for me. The nails in your feet and hands, the crown of thorns and the beating on uh, of the lashes that um, uh, the soldiers gave you, and the mocking and the loneliness of being uh, forced to carry the cross and to be crucified for the mockery of all. So hearing in my heart that challenge, what will you do for me, was enough for me to want to give myself completely to him. Father Peter will tell you uh, other powerful stories of priests who had impressed him and what that meant. And if you ask Father Isaiah, Mary, and any other priests, you'll hear the, 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 the stories of the priests who were heroes to them. It is Christ who calls us. And Christ is the main priest. In, in all actuality, he's the only priest. And we, who are priests, participate in this commission that he has given us, calling us to serve him and to serve his church. And there are effects of this sacrament. Because what, um, listen to this, the sacrament configures the the person the men the man to be ordained the recipient can reconfigures him to Christ by a special grace of the holy spirit so that he may serve as Christ's instrument for his church by ordination the priest is enabled to act as a representative of Christ head of the church in his triple office of priest, prophet, and king. He is granted the grace of the sacrament once and for all. The sacrament of holy orders, like baptism and confirmation, it confers an indelible spiritual character, and that cannot be repeated or conferred temporarily. Now, it is true that someone validly ordained can, for grave reasons, be discharged from the obligations and functions linked with ordination or can be forbidden to exercise them. But he cannot become a layman, a layman against, uh, again in the strict sense because the character imprinted by ordination is forever. The vocation and mission received on the day of his ordination mark him permanently. <clears throat> and as I said, Christ Jesus offering himself on the cross is the priest, the priest, and we our shares in this ministry to give his body and his blood to feed his church. So since it is ultimately Christ who acts and effects salvation through the ordained minister, when there is an unworthy man who has been ordained a priest, what happens when somebody has caused scandal or committed crimes or done terrible deeds that uh, have been like a, a millstone 
uh, tied a, 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 against the church, a, a suffering, a wound on the church. Are all of the sacraments that he has uh, made, uh, has, has performed, are they just for show? Well, listen to what the church says. Even if he is a bad priest, even if he is a bad priest, St. Augustine says, Christ's gift is not therefore profaned. What flows through him, even though he's bad, what flows through him, however, keeps its purity. What passes through him remains clear and reaches the fertile earth. The spiritual power of the sacrament is indeed comparable to light. Those who are enlightened receive it in its purity, and if it should, and if it should pass through defiled beings, it itself is not defiled. And the grace of the Holy Spirit proper to the sacrament, it configures to Christ the priest, the teacher, the pastor, to whom the ordained is made a minister. The good priest is like St. Paul describing himself to the Thessalonians. He said, we, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well. So dearly beloved, so dearly beloved had you become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day, in order not to be a burden to any of you, but proclaim to you the gospel of God. So the good priest, the good priest allows Christ to use him to serve you and to draw the church closer to God and to feed us with the very sacraments that uh, forgive our sins and that uh, bring us along the way of salvation. This is the gift of God. This is the gift of God in the good priest. Let us now profess our faith in the God who calls us all to our vocation in life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. God's faithfulness and mercy are stronger than death. Therefore, we offer our prayers. 
to the Father with confidence. For vocations to the church, as we begin vocations week in the church, and that young people will hear and answer God's calling, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence in the Middle East and reconciliation among ethnic groups in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us will live out our faith to be good examples of our love of Jesus and our faith in him by what we do and what we say, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of all our loved ones, especially those listed on our banner who have died in the past year, and those written on the envelopes on the altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Julita Villarama Cruz, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy, you raised your son from death. Hear and answer now what we ask in his name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that are, is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Dominic and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated a moment, please. Uh, the parish is now hosting a raffle for free, a free flight to Italy and Croatia, and the raffle tickets are available in the office after Mass. Virtus classes for parish ministers for renewal of their Virtus training will be on Saturday, November 11, this coming Saturday, and please sign up online uh, and see the bulletin for that link. Fingerprinting for parish ministers has been scheduled for December 16 here at St. Dominic's. So we don't always have it available here. They just take it to one parish and we have to go to other parishes. So we're having it here at St. Dominic's to make it easy for you on December 16. But you have to sign up in advance in the parish office for your appointment. After Mass today, we'll have a flu I'm sorry, next weekend, next Sunday the 12th, will be a flu vaccine clinic by Queen's Care. And that will be from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. They'll close up and shut down at 1 p.m. And that's next Sunday, November 12th, in the Adult Education Building. We'll have free, regular, and high-dose flu vaccines, but no COVID vaccine. Next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, November 11 and 12, we will have the visit of the images of Our Lady of Guadalupe and St. Juan Diego as part of their pilgrimage around the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. And we invite the devotees of Our Lady of Guadalupe to pray the rosary for world peace, world peace on Saturday the 11th here in the church in the afternoon. And this is the beginning of what the church calls uh, Vocations Week. So we pray for vocations to the church to be able to serve the people of God, all of you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to glorify the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.